The Honorable Antonio Villarigosa made us all so proud when elected the 41st mayor of Los Angeles, California in 2005. The first Latino elected mayor since 1872. And he was rewarded for his outstanding leadership with re-election in 2009 to a second four-year term. Mayor Virigosa previously served as Speaker of the California Assembly and a member of the Los Angeles City Council. In addition, he served as President of the United States Conference of Mayors in 2012, making him, in essence, the nation's mayor. Honored twice, twice, with the Eagle Leadership Award in 2005 as mayor-elect and four years ago. Yes, at this event four years ago, Antonio Villarigosa served as chair of the Democratic National Convention in Charlotte. Welcome, Antonio Villarigosa, for the introduction of our honoree. I love Mickey. I said, you know, he always gives all of us such a generous uh, introduction, and I want you to know I wrote it all myself. <laughs> but let me say something about Mickey. You know, I've been coming to these uh, virtually since the beginning. I think a number of us have. And what the Latino leaders luncheon reminds us of, this network of Latino leaders, is the importance of us connecting to one another. That we're stronger together, that, uh, that from time to time we may have disagreements, but we have to come to one place, uh, a place where we feel safe, a place where we can thrive. And that's been the Latino Leaders Network. And I joke with some of my friends, uh, we, some of us have been in battle from time to time. The one thing we have in common is we love and respect Mickey Ibarra. Give him a big hand. The Latino Leaders Network, the board, thank you very much for bringing us together here at this convention. Thank you. You know, I hate going up after Henry Cisneros. <laughs> Imagine. It's not my first rodeo, and it's not the first time I've had to go after Henry. Uh, but actually, I say that in jest. Because what I want to talk about, since Henry shared his entire resume, what I want to talk about is why I feel so proud to be here why Henry feels so proud to be here, why Bill feels so proud to be here, why so many of us feel very, very proud today. I've often said when mentioned or told about being the first, the role of the first is not to bang on your chest and say how great I am. The role of the first is to open up the door for the rest. At my inauguration as mayor, I said, I come here on the shoulders of others. We're here, every one of us, are here on the shoulders of Dolores Huerta, Cesar Chavez, Martin Luther King, Rosa Parks. We're here because it was a civil rights act and a voting rights act that opened up the country. We're here on the shoulders of giants, Gloria Molina, who got me started, who used to pull me by the oreja, a little different than you. Julian, you had Henry. I had Gloria. Esta oreja está chueco por tantos jalando de las orejas. But you know, in LA, we had Richard Alatorre and Art Torres and across the nation, and of course, of course, 
we had Ed Royball, uh, our leader, and among the first. And so when we see the next generation, and you know, you mentioned the resume and his college education. You know, some of us who got started, me at 15 with the farm workers boycott, you know, I was a high school dropout. I had been kicked out of school before that. I had gone down a road, you know, up and down and all around and finally got where I needed to be. The next generation were more prepared. The next generation had parents that focused on education, that gave them a high ceiling and a high bar to jump. And what I marvel about when I think of Julian was that speech in 2012. I was there. I was standing as the chair watching him proud. Watching him talk about his mother, talking about her sacrifices, talking about a woman who carried those two boys and took them to City Hall and gave them good values and inculcated in their heads from the beginning, I'm proud to be an American, but I'm proud to be a Mexican as well. And when you, yeah, let's give them, his mother a big hand. And you know, hearing him tell his story and remembering where he came from and remembering what his journey was, but also what his responsibility is, couldn't make, I think, all of us prouder. So Bill, you know, is standing there and he's got more titles than most of us will ever have in our lifetime. And his life still has plenty of life in it. Henry as well. But what we're so proud is because we know this next generation are going to take us even further. Because you know the other thing I say when you open up the door for the rest? When they get through that door, they'll go farther than you. They will reach for the stars and follow their dreams. They will go to places that none of us ever imagined. And I think that's why so many of us are proud to be here today, to celebrate Julian's short time in public life. But what a time it's been. He, you know, we heard what he's done as mayor, just revitalized downtown. Uh, we know what he's done as uh, the housing uh, administration. I was told to be careful about that, so I will. But why we celebrate him is we know he's got still a lot further to go. And so today, we celebrate your work, the work of your brother, because you guys are tied at the hip in more ways than one. Your family, your bigger family. We celebrate you, we acknowledge your leadership, we're proud of you. And so it is my honor to introduce a man who needs no introduction at this young and tender age of his, Julian Castro. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. First of all, uh, to Antonio, you know, the first time that Antonio and I spoke was on June 7, 2005. I remember that day because that was the day of my first mayoral election in San Antonio, and it was 10 days before he became the mayor of Los Angeles. And as you can imagine, it was election day in San Antonio, and so we were busy doing a million things, and I'm sure that it was 10 days away, and he was busy doing a million things in LA, but he took the time that afternoon to reach out and to say to me, good luck. I hope that you win in San Antonio. 
If you win, it's going to mean a lot, not just for the people of San Antonio, but for the nation. Uh, I'll always remember that, Antonio. I lost that night. <laughs> but you won 10 days later, and Los Angeles won, and California won, and the entire community won because of that. Thank you for your leadership. Uh, I also, of course, want to profoundly thank uh, Henry and Mary Alice, his lovely wife, who I served on the city council with. You know, uh, when Joaquin and I were growing up in, in San Antonio in the 1980s, as Henry mentioned, my mother worked at City Hall, uh, but Henry was a trailblazer, a groundbreaker, the first Hispanic mayor of a major American city, someone who was showing what could be done at the local level and getting national attention, and really served as a role model to so many of us who when we looked for leaders that we could see some of ourselves in, we looked at Henry. And his leadership has continued. And through the years, he's never hesitated to offer his advice as a friend. For that, I want to thank you, Henry. You've made a lot of difference. Thank you for your leadership. There are so many, uh, so many folks that, that make us so proud in the Latino community that are here. And I know that if I start trying to go through everybody, uh, I'm, I'm going to miss folks and offend them. But let me just thank Dolores Huerta, uh, because Dolores is a living legend. That it's true that without her, so many of us in this generation wouldn't have nearly, nearly the opportunity that we have in this country. Thank you, Dolores, for all of your leadership and every, every door that you have opened over the years. Uh, I also, of course, want to thank Eva, and I want to thank Javier Palomares, and Brent Wilkes, and all of the folks who are making a difference, uh, maybe not in public service, but in the nonprofit sector, in the private sector. Uh, and of course, I want to thank Mickey uh, and the Latino Leaders Network. Mickey reached out to me before I was a mayor, when I was on the city council, I think 26 or 27 years old. Uh, because Mickey, you have always concerned yourself with making sure that the next generation has the kind of opportunity that you have had. Uh, muchísimas gracias. Thank you so much. And of course, I want to acknowledge um, my, my brother, Joaquin, who is here today. You know, earlier we were on the CBS Morning Show, and, uh, and Charlie Rose asked us, uh, which one of you is going to run against Ted Cruz in 2018? <laughs> and the first thing I said was, well, probably zero of us. And he shot right back, well, he's speaking for himself. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's living up to the reputation of the more outgoing extroverted twin today. Um, but uh, I, I'm convinced that, that I wouldn't be nearly where I am in life if it weren't for uh, Joaquin and the fact that we have been best friends ever since before we were born. Uh, and so thank you, Joaquin, for being here as well and for your great leadership. I like the kid folks and, you know, Joaquin goes around telling people that the way to tell us apart is that I'm a minute uglier than he is. And I like to remind folks that, you know, we, we both live in Washington, but I'm the only one who actually works in Washington. So, I want to thank you all for this recognition. <laughs> As Antonio said, uh, I am proud to be an American and I am proud of my Mexican heritage as well. You know, Joaquin and I grew up like Henry did on the west side of San Antonio. Uh, we grew up with our grandmother who had come over from Mexico when she was six years old uh, as an orphan. Uh, she worked her entire life as a maid, a cook, and a babysitter because she got taken out of school uh, by the relatives that she lived with when she was young. Um, because of that, uh, you know, she never made a lot of money in life. 
but she raised a daughter, our mother, uh, to graduate from high school and then go on to college. When we were growing up with her and with my mom, um, my mother was a bit of a hell raiser in her youth. She was active in the Chicano movement, in the Raza Unida party. And she ran for city council in San Antonio when she was 23 years old. And it was a time in 1971 before very many women and very many minorities actually got elected in big cities, before Henry broke through in 1981 and, and became mayor. And you know, I remember a couple of things about my mom that, um, that really helped shape who we are. The first was attending our sixth grade orientation. We showed up to sixth grade orientation at one of the schools, the neighborhood school. We were about to start middle school and at some point in the orientation, one of the administrators stood up and, and they asked us to look around the room. You know, We were there, a whole bunch of other students and the parents and my mom was there. And this administrator asked us to look around the room and said that the chances were that by the time we were supposed to leave the eighth grade, that maybe up to half of us wouldn't be there anymore. And you know, that didn't mean that much to us at the age of 11 or 12, but later that day, my mother pulled us out of that school and she put us in another one a little bit further down. And she told us later that she would never keep her sons anywhere where they didn't believe that they could at least finish the eighth grade. The other thing that I remember in her city hall office in the basement, she used to have her office for part of the time was that she had this little cartoon placard that said, God is coming and boy is she pissed. <laughs> So we grew up with a mother who instilled in us this sense that we had value, that we could achieve, that we should dream big, and that people of all different backgrounds had something to contribute to the forward progress of our nation. We grew up and eventually decided to go into public service ourselves. I decided to go into public service because when I went away to college, it was the first time that I had ever really been away from home. And I could see in the Bay Area around Stanford that there was a community that had a higher income level, a higher education level that was more innovative and entrepreneurial. At the same time, I came to value even more what I loved about San Antonio that it was such a culturally rich city, that it was a wonderful place to raise a family, that it was somewhere that when two people passed each other on the street, that they still looked each other in the eye, that there was still a sense of connection, a sense of community that existed. And my interest in public service came out of the question of how could you combine the best of those two things, create a community that was ready for the future, that was innovative, had a good education level, and at the same time had a wonderful fundamental character and a cultural richness to it. And it was a thrill of my life to get to succeed Henry eventually as mayor and to serve San Antonio. And I know that in this room, whether through public service or through business or education or the arts, that you feel blessed as I do with opportunity as well. And that's why you do what you do. I wanna thank the so many people who are here who are making a difference in expanding opportunity in your own right. It's also, I think, right at the heart of why we gathered this week to ensure that this election produces an outcome that will expand opportunity in our country and not take it away. A few years ago, I had the chance to visit Israel. And I sat down for about an hour with President Shimon Peres. And I'll never forget that one of the things he told me back then was that, that we use mirrors, like a physical mirror, to look 
at ourselves. And based on how we look in the mirror, we make improvements, you know, comb our hair or shave. We make physical improvements. And then he asked, what is the mirror for the soul? I believe that November is all about what is the mirror of this nation's soul? What is it that we can reach for that will ensure that we stay on course, that as a nation we are who we're supposed to be, who we always have been? And the answer, of course, is that those are our values. Our values are a kind of mirror. It's my hope that through your work in all of those different sectors, through your life's accomplishments, through your effort, that we will remain true as a nation that expands opportunity, expands equality, and expands liberty. I know that it's been the thrill of my life to get to do and play a small part in that. And I know in the years to come that we'll continue to celebrate so many of the accomplishments of the folk, folks in this room who are also making us proud. So Mickey, thank you very much for the recognition. I appreciate it. And let's win in November. Thank you. I'd like to ask the Board of Director members to come forward to assist me in presenting our award. Come on right over here, gang. The Eagle Leadership Award. Julian, on behalf of the Latino Leaders Network, we are pleased to present this Eagle Leadership Award for your outstanding service to our community and to our nation. Julian Castro.